India's Defense Research and Development Organization tested its first indigenous aircraft, Hansa 3, and the Trishul missile. To celebrate and commemorate this big achievement of our country, 11th May was declared as National Technology Day in the year 1999. When we talk about technology, the field of computer science immediately comes to our minds. Since computer science is working as backbone, almost behind all technological advancements these days. So role of computer science can neither be denied nor be ignored in the field of science and technology. Although computer science is an umbrella term for many subdomains, domain of artificial intelligence is most prominently affecting our lives and technological advancements. Keeping this in our minds, we found it appropriate to organize a webinar illustrating the role of artificial intelligence in revolutionizing our society. We all are very fortunate that for today's lecture, we have with us Dr. Rakesh Kumar, Professor and Chairman, Department of Computer Science and Applications, Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra. I feel honored to welcome Dr. Rakesh to this platform as he is my teacher. He is an expert of artificial intelligence and he is a wonderful orator. He is the one who raised my interest in artificial intelligence during my master's from the department, which led me to pursue my PhD in the same domain. Before moving further, I would like to present a brief profile of our resource person. Dr. Rakesh Kumar is chairman and professor in Department of Computer Science and Applications, Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra. He has 32 years of vast teaching experience in the field of computer science. He has, to his credit, approximately 100 publications in international and national journals of repute with a citation index of 500. He is senior member of International Association of Computer Science and Information Technology, Singapore. He is head of University Computer Center. He is member of Academic Council. IQAC, HPSPC, Career and Counseling Cell, Web Cell, and Automation of Electronic Information Management Cell of Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra. He is co coordinator of Admission Cell and coordinator of Center for IT and Automation, Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra. He is member of Departmental Research Committee, Himachal Pradesh University, Shimla. He is member of UG and PG Board of Studies of Department of Computer Science and Applications, Kurukshetra University, and member of PG Board of Studies of Chaudhary Devilal University, Sirsa. He has delivered many expert lectures and chaired sessions in various national and international conferences. It is very clear from his profile that we all are fortunate to have such an eminent expert with us for this webinar today. I can assure all faculty members and students that today's webinar is going to be very enriching for all of us. Now, I would request our Honorable Principal, Dr. Harvinder Kaur, to formally welcome our resource person. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Aarti. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, respected Director, ma'am eminent guest and my dear staff and students it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to today's webinar on role of artificial intelligence in revolutionizing the society we are celebrating national technology day today we have with us dr rakesh kumar chairperson and professor department of computer science and applications kurukshetra university kurukshetra as the resource person for the webinar I am thankful to him for graciously accepting our invitation to join us. The theme of National Technology Day 2024 from schools to startup, igniting young minds to innovate is a remarkable initiative aimed at inspiring and motivating the young generation to take an interest in technology. It highlights the importance of nurturing, creativity, and entrepreneurship in our youth. 
technology has revolutionized the way we live, work, and communicate, making our lives more efficient and connected than ever before. All thanks to technology, which has enabled us to connect to each other for today's webinar, sitting at such far off places. As we reflect on the impact of technology on our lives, we are reminded of the endless possibilities that lie ahead. It is through events like this that we can inspire and empower the next generation of innovators and entrepreneurs. I encourage each and every one of you to keep embracing innovation and creativity in everything you do. Let's continue to use technology for good and strive to make a difference in the world around us. Thank you for joining us in this celebration of technology and innovation. My best wishes to the organizers, and I hope that through this webinar, we will be able to ignite these young minds and encourage them to dream big, think outside the box, and make a difference in the world. Thank you. Uh, Aarti. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now, I would request our today's resource person, Dr. Rakesh Kumar, to start with his lecture. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Aarti. Am I? I audible to all of you. Arti, yes, am I audible. audible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. So, will you get me the right to present? Yes, sir. You can share your screen. Uh, no, I'm getting the message that this will let you take over from uh, Dr. Varinder Ghan. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. And you, your screen will be shared. Tina, stop presenting. Please. Sir, you can share. Yes, the main presenter. Share now. Okay. Okay. Sir, are you getting some problem in sharing your screen? Hello? Yes, Harti, am I audible to you right now? Yes, sir. Yes. Actually, I lost the connection. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, just a minute. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. You are audible.
So the screen is visible now. No, sir. Your screen is not visible. Just tell me. Nice. Now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your okay. screen is visible now. Thank you. So, first of all, I would like to uh, appreciate that I have been given this opportunity by the principal of uh, GNG College, Yamnanagar, and Dr. Arthi Singh to discuss about the artificial intelligence and uh, how is it affecting our society and causing the revolution in the society. From the very first screen, as you are seeing this thing, I have uh, written this thing that AI is equal to search plus knowledge plus learning. Uh, as Arti also told you this thing that uh, I was uh, teaching this particular topic, artificial intelligence, in my department here, Purukshetra University, since 1994. Okay, but uh, at that time. It started to lose the charm. And I can recollect that I think around in 2010 onwards, again, it started to gain the popularity. And what's the reason of these things and how it's making the improvement nowadays? I will be focusing on all these issues and uh, ethical and unethical uses also in case of AI. So, again, AI, the three main components as I understand, is search, knowledge, and learning. But as far as today's world is concerned, this is the third one. This is the learning. It's making a lot of difference. So basically, if I will start from the journey of this uh, artificial intelligence, uh, as uh, generally every student, when he is studying the computer science and engineering this field, they are told this thing that there are different generations of computers and these are characterized as first, second, third, fourth, and fifth generation. And the present generation of the computer is referred to as, as fifth generation of the computer. And this fifth generation of computer, it is characterized by a very important thing, and that is the artificial intelligence. So I think around 20 years or 30 years back also it was appreciated, it was understood that the fifth generation computers will be the intelligent computers and these will be based on the concept of artificial intelligence. And uh, I think the person who is uh, or who have contributed maximum to this field of artificial intelligence is the scientist Alan Turing. You are seeing his picture, his image on the screen. And uh, Alan Turing was the mathematician as well as computer scientist. And he was from uh, UK, United Kingdom. And in uh, 1947 in London, Alan Turing gave the earliest public lecture to mention computer intelligence. OK, well, at that time, in 1947, he was of this opinion that a time will be there when machine will be intelligent. But uh, as far as the word artificial intelligence is concerned, he never used this word artificial intelligence. He said only one thing, that a time will be there, that machine will be intelligent, and they will be able to play the game like chess, etc. And at that time, 
at that time i can say in 1947 at that time the computers were not that much powerful he proposed an algorithm also to play the game chess so in 1948 he introduced many of the central concepts of ai in a report entitled intelligent machinery however turing did not publish this paper and many of his ideas were later on reinvented by others so basically Turing, everyone has to study about him. And uh, I will have to tell you one thing that as far as this computer science and engineering, this particular discipline is concerned, there is no normal prize in this particular domain. As in case of physics or chemistry, the person who is doing a good research work, they are awarded with the Nobel Prize. But in case of computer science, this is not there. So the highest award which is given to a scientist in the field of computer science is known as the Turing Award and simply to honor this great scientist. He was the part of the UK Army also during the Defense Forces during the Second World War. And it is also told that due to his research and his working, the Allied armies, they were able to decrypt the signals of uh, the German forces and it helped him in winning the Second World War. So Turing at that time, he proposed this thing, and which is popularly known as the Turing test. He said this thing that if a machine is claimed to be the intelligent, then you can say this is intelligence if and only if it will pass a test that is popularly known as the Turing test. One has to understand this thing because uh, if we are able to understand the very basic and the fundamental of artificial intelligence, I think it's not a topic which is a difficult one. As far as the end user is concerned, it's very easy to use. Only thing is that we will have to be familiar with the very basic of it. The Turing test is like this. You are seeing this thing on the right of this particular screen. There are two rooms. In one room, there is a person, and in another room, there is a computer. Okay. And this computer, if someone is claiming that this machine is intelligent, and we will have to find out whether this is intelligent or not. So, what the proposal of Alan Turing was that you are interrogator here, and you will ask a question, and that will be directed to the person B or to the machine also, and they will have to give the response. The problem is this that this person A do not know in which room there is a man, in which room there is a machine. Simply by this way of interaction, in this imitation game, the person A has to identify in which room there is a man and in which room there is a machine. So by asking the question, if the person A can identify correctly that in this room this is a man and in this room this is the machine, so we can say that that machine is not intelligent. So what is the meaning of that? If a machine is intelligent, it has to imitate the intelligent behavior of the human being. So if you are not able to differentiate between the man and the machine on the basis of their responses, then only you can say this thing that this machine is imitating or behaving just like a human being. And that's why it is intelligence. So this was the test proposed by Alan Turing at that time in 40s. Now you can see this thing. Maximum time nowadays, uh, students are making the use of this chat GPT also. Okay. So with this chat GPT, when you are interacting, one very important thing is that we are interacting by making the use of the natural language. And not only natural language, approximately, I think, 60 or 70 different languages are also allowed. OK, so when you are interacting with the chat GPT in natural language and you are getting the response, you are made to believe this thing that this response is coming from a human being. It's behaving just like a human being. So you cannot differentiate between the response of a man and the response of a machine. And that's why we are saying this thing that this chat GPT is intelligent. So basically, Alan Turing at that time 
in 40s proposed this test and he said this thing that a machine if passing this test then only we can say this is intelligent otherwise it is not intelligent I think sir has lost connection. Please wait for a moment. Yes, Arthi, am I audible now? Yes, sir, you are audible. Ah, at what point of time I was disconnected? Sir, it was uh, till the end of Turing test. Okay, fine. So I was saying this thing that uh, another very important milestone in the journey of AI was the Samuel Chinese checker playing program. Actually, Samuel was the one who coined this word machine learning first time in the year 1959. And he designed at that time a program to play the game checker. In this image, which you are seeing on the monitor here, there is Samuel and his checker playing program. And the very interesting thing about this was that the game was able to defeat its creator, that is the Samuel, and not only the creator, it was able to defeat the number one player of the checker at that time in the USA also. So if a program simply designing designed by some computer programmer is defeating the number one player, okay, how is it possible? Because whenever we are uh, talking about the computers, we are talking about the programs, we are saying this thing that machine that is a computer it's a layman it's not having any intelligence so you will have to write the program and program is a set of instructions written in some computer language so you will have to get the instructions at each and every step to the machine to carry out its job so if a program is defeating the creator or the number one player of the world so one reason of this can be that the creator of that program is a very good player of the checker and he is knowing the better checker than the number one player. But this is not possible. If you are the number one player of some particular game, so in that case, the better option for you in your career is to play the game instead of doing the programming. The main thing was in that program, there was a learning component and the machine it was designed to learn just like human being. Okay. And the meaning of learning is knowledge acquisition. That is every day when we are learning, we are adding the new knowledge, we are adding 
existing or modifying some existing facts or sometimes the doing the deletion of the existing facts so basically all these alterations insertion deletion modification in the knowledge that is known as learning and it is helping us in improving our performance so if we are designing a program just like this that if you are interacting with it and it is learning from its experiences whenever it is winning or whenever it is losing it is doing the analysis of the game and going for a sort of credit assignment problem identifying this thing that i have won this match because at that crucial time i made this move and that was a very good move and in future if the same type of situation will arise again i will make the same move so in this way just like a human being it will keep on improving its knowledge base and will become a better player so this was the key characteristic of the samuel's checker playing program and that is learning so we human being i told you this thing that artificial intelligence is the imitation of intelligent behavior in human being so we human beings are intelligent the reason is Send your screen is not visible. Sorry, it's uh, disconnecting repeatedly. Uh, no issues. Okay. So I was telling this thing that first time in fifties, uh, this word machine learning, which has become very popular nowadays, was coined by Arthur Samuel. And machine learning basically it's a branch of artificial intelligence which focuses on the use of data and algorithm to imitate the way that humans learn visually improving its accuracy so arthur samuel at ibm was the first to coin the term machine learning 
with his research around the game of checker and robert nile the checker master played the game on an ibm 7094 computer in 1962 and he lost to the computer it is considered a major milestone in the field of artificial intelligence so again i was saying this thing that this is the learning capability of the program that it was imitating the human beings learning behavior it is improving its performance gradually and it was able at that time to defeat the number one player of the us robert Nile. then in 1955 first time the word artificial intelligence was coined by the scientist john mccarthy and uh, first time the word ai was used by him and uh, this john mccarthy he was awarded the turing award also at that time for his research so ai was defined by him as the science and engineering of making intelligent machines so basically uh this was a great man, this John McCarthy, and I think at that time, he said this thing that a time will be there, then uh, total computing of the world will be done by 15 or 20 servers in the world. So nowadays, the concept of cloud computing, we are seeing this thing, the same one. So he was apprehensive of this thing in 55 also, that a time will be there when the machine will be intelligent, number one, and number Just a minute, I'm changing the connection now. Just a minute. I think uh, I will have to reconnect now, please.
okay so i was telling you this thing that a number of definitions of the word artificial intelligence has been given and uh, some of them uh, i am sharing with you right now that it is a branch of computer science which is dealing with symbolic processing and non algorithmic method of problem solving and another is that artificial intelligence is a branch of science that deals with ways of representing knowledge using symbols rather than numbers and with rules of thumbs or heuristic methods for processing information so basically generally there are two things one is i can call a conventional computing and another is the intelligent computing so when we are talking about the conventional computing our focus processing of the numbers and we are making the use of algorithmic approaches and in case of intelligent computing the difference is that instead of making the use of numerical processing we are making the use of symbolic processing we are dealing with symbols and another important thing is that our approach is non algorithmic instead of algorithmic one so it's a bit uh, you can say technical but i would like to differentiate between these two concepts when we are talking about algorithm uh these are you can say precise specific finite and uh, they are every time getting you the exact answer for example if i am having an algorithm to compute the factorial of a given number and if i will get it the number 5 as an input it will generate the output 120 and that is the exact number but in real life we are not working like this when we are doing the computation for example if you are asking me what is the factorial of 7 so i can say it's approximately 5000 so our approach is a sort of approach which we are calling a non algorithmic one which is not getting us every time the best answer rather which is getting us the approximate answer or you can say a satisfactory answer or that is you can say a good one sometimes not the best one so this is the difference between the non algorithmic approaches and the algorithmic approaches so one key contributor in the development of ai is the scientist alan rich also and he said this thing that ai is the study of how to make computers do things at which at the moment people are better so she is of this opinion that if any aspect of the life we can say that man is better than machine and if we are programming the machine to carry out that particular activity then this is artificial intelligence and she said this thing that generally these three aspects like calculations and the storage and doing the repetitive jobs generally the machines are better than men so if we are making the use of machine to carry out these activities no it's not intelligence intelligence is if we are programming the machine to carry out those activities in which a human being is better and it is told that all those activities in which intelligence is involved uh we human being that is man is better than machine so what is intelligence it's a very difficult word to define but it is characterized by a number of things for example you are seeing it on the monitor on the right hand side of the panel the ability to solve novel problems the ability to act rationally the ability to act like humans all these are the characteristic features of the intelligence but very important characteristic of the intelligent behavior in human being is learning that is we can learn we can improve our performance every day and if we are designing the machine to work like this it is intelligent so why we have to make the use of ai what are the motivating factors right so some key factors which are asking us to make the use of ai are number 1 you are seeing uncertainty and unstructuredness another is use of knowledge to solve the problem third it is learning and fourth it is the problem of combinatorial explosion actually in our maximum real life problems we are dealing with uncertainty and unstructuredness so in such type of problems we do not have any algorithmic approach available to solve the problem so we will have to work with artificial intelligence another important thing is 
that there are a number of problems in which to solve them we have to make a use of the domain specific knowledge okay so it's a uh, intelligent so we have to make the use of ai another learning i have discussed now a lot about it and fourth is the problem of combinatorial explosion actually there are some problems in which we can say that we have algorithmic approaches available and uh, those approaches can get us the best answer also but problem is that due to the combinatorial explosion our machines will be running short of time and the storage a very familiar problem is this which you are seeing it on the screen traveling salesman problem and the problem is uh, as you are seeing here uh, there are five cities i am saying a b c d and e and i am saying that every city is connected with every other city with a direct air route for example a is connected with b a is connected with c like this okay and there is a salesman he has to start the journey from city a and he has to visit all the cities that is b c d and e exactly once and in order to save the time the distance traveled it is to be minimized so the problem is the identification of the shortest path if there are five cities i am telling you this thing four factorial that is this many routes will be possible so thing is that we will have to identify those 24 routes and then compute their distances and we can find out the shortest one but in real life generally a salesman has to visit sometimes approximately 20 cities and if 20 cities are connected like this so you are seeing this thing 20 factorial that is 2.43 quadrillion this many different routes will be possible so we do have the algorithm available which can systematically identify all those routes can compute their distances and find out the shortest path but the time consumed by it will be due to this problem of combinatorial explosion approximately 100 years that is in your lifetime the calculations will not be completed so you are seeing this thing that these are the issues which are motivating us that we will have to make the use of intelligent approaches to solve the problems another uh, milestone in the journey of ai was this uh, you are seeing here the on the screen these two things one is gary kasparov and he is playing with a computer known as deep blue recently also in the election uh, which is going on we are seeing the statement given by this uh, great man gary kasparov about the indian election so gary kasparov at that time in 1997 was the number one player of the chess and at that time he was defeated uh, by an ibm machine known as deep blue so there were total six matches and out of those six matches in five matches gary kasparov was defeated so number one player of the chess was defeated by a computer and the reason is again the program was designed to learn just like a human being it was having a learning component so it is learning and improving its performance every day another thing uh, which uh, you can say nowadays we are uh, very frequently we are making the use of ai and another thing you will see this thing i will get you the idea of this thing that you have been made to make the use of ai but you are not aware of this thing right now you are seeing one thing an image on the screen and you will have to identify this thing what is it so all of you will say this thing that this is the image of mahatma gandhi so we can recognize the pattern by seeing it so how we are doing it it's very difficult to interpret and nowadays when you are making the use of computers or doing some banking etc you are seeing this thing that you are given a captcha and in that captcha you have been asked to identify all those images in which the traffic light is there or identify all those images in which the car is there or you can say the coffee mug is there so basically when you are identifying those images you are providing a data set to the learning program okay you are training that machine so basically thing is as we are recognizing the pattern every day we are seeing this type of pattern and somehow we are learning it in the same fashion these patterns are given to the machine also okay 
and they will automatically identify the patterns in them and they will recognize it. One very important application of AI is this natural language processing also. And you were seeing this thing and earlier also I discussed with you that in case of chat GPT, we are interacting with it in the natural language. Okay. Intelligent thing about natural language is that uh, natural language tends to be very ambiguous. A sentence or a word can have multiple meaning depending upon the context in which we are using it. In the example which I am showing you here on the monitor, the sentence is, I never said she stole my money. So in this sentence, there are total seven words and depending upon the context, there can be seven different meanings of this particular sentence. But we do, we human beings, we do not face any problem in identifying the correct meaning of the sentence. The reason is we have the knowledge about the context. So if machine is also having the knowledge about the context, then it will be able to learn. It will be able to interact in the natural language and can identify the correct meaning. With chat GPT, it's having the knowledge. It's having the knowledge of the environment. The data is available, has been made available from the World Wide Web. Using that data, it has been trained. So just like us, it's having the knowledge of the world, of the belief, of the custom, of the cities, of the places. And then just like us, it is able to identify the correct meaning of the natural language sentences. So here in this particular table, I have differentiated between the conventional computing and the artificial intelligence. I discussed a bit about it earlier also. But right now, I am going now coming to that point, how this AI is helping us or revolutionizing the society is causing a revolution. In this cartoon, which you are seeing on the monitor, one patient is interacting with a doctor and doctor is saying this thing, and who gave you the first opinion? Facebook, Twitter, or WhatsApp? Okay, basically, no doubt, it's a satire. The thing is, if you are having some problem, some medical problem, nowadays, what is happening? Before going to the doctor, you are making the use of internet, World Wide Web, and all these social media tools, and you are trying to find out the solution, what's wrong with you? Okay, and then we are saying this thing, okay, now I am going to the doctor to take the second opinion. So doctor is now has become a second opinion. AI is having the applications in the field of education. It is having the application in the field of healthcare, in the field of transportation, in the field of entertainment, in the field of finance. And you name any field, we are seeing the application of artificial intelligence in that. For example, uh, if you will Google So I was telling you this thing that AI is having its application in the field of education, in the field of healthcare, in the field of transportation, entertainment, finance, and you name any field and you will see the application of artificial intelligence there. All right. I was talking about the chat GPT. And if you will see the Google trend, you will see a graph that the use of chat GPT is continuously increasing, right? And 15% uh, uses of chat GPT is there in US, 
and on the second number it is there in india i think approximately 6.2 percent okay so in india also a number of users are making the use of chat gpt what very interesting point about chat gpt is that it is getting you an interface of a text only right it's not like the search engines just like google using which you can identify the images or you can identify the videos and you are making the use of that to search any information and that information has been made available to you in case of chat gpt you are interacting with it you are putting the questions or it will uh, analyze the data available to it and will get you the answer so if i am saying this thing that its uses is continuously increasing believe me a number of users who are making the use of chat gpt are the students the researchers and the scientists okay it's not only for the purpose of fun and basically the performance of chat gpt why it is improving every day because it is making the use of the deep learning also basically i won't get you the intricate details of deep learning but it's a subset of machine learning and it is making the use of artificial neural network just like the biological neural network which is present in all the living beings you are seeing here on the top of the screen the biological neural network and on the bottom this is the artificial neural network so as in case of human being the learning is carried out by the biological neural network by imitating the same behavior by making the use of ann the learning is carried out and another important thing which we are using nowadays is the generative ai generative ai it is focusing on creating new contents data or outputs that mimic those products those produced by humans ai models are trained on large data sets and can generate novel content autonomously so you are Kindly wait for a minute. Sir has got disconnected. So basically, now I will discuss with you some real life examples in which the AI is used. And generally, they are making the use of a technique which is known as the inductive learning. For example, all of you are making the use of email. Generally, you are using Gmail also. So you are seeing this thing that you are having a spam box also where you are seeing or you are getting every day the spam mails right so how the system is able to identify this thing that this is a spam mail or not a spam mail okay so there also the artificial intelligence techniques are used what the uh, system is doing we have a data set of emails labeled as spam or not spam based on their content so simply to train the machine first of all the data set is provided so i am giving it thousands of the mail which are spam mail and those which are not the spam mail by analyzing it it will try to identify the patterns in them for example it may learn that emails which are containing the words like free offer discount are more likely to be spam while emails containing the words like meeting, presentation, deadlines are more likely to be the legitimate. 
because generally all these type of spam mails they are offering you something free or offering you some discount or some lottery these type of things are there so these intelligent machines they will analyze all those mails which have been labeled as spam and will identify what are the things which are common in them okay and then it will know it will learn this thing that if these type of words are present then these are the spam mail so automatically when you are receiving the mail it will see it will analyze the contents and will put them in the spam box it's an example of the inductive learning that is learning from examples so basically from this uh, image you will understand that there are two type of learning techniques which are used by these computers one is known as supervised learning and another is a uh, unsupervised learning on the left hand side for example this machine is taught about the uh, if i making the use of the concept of supervised learning so this is uh, some images are shown to it of the apple and machine is saying that these are banana and you are saying no these are not banana then he is saying these are apples you are saying yes these are apples so basically we are getting it the examples that or we are calling them the labeled examples and from them it is learning and this is unsupervised learning in this case a number of objects have been given to the machine a number of bananas and number of apples and it will try to identify the differences between them automatically and putting them into two different categories in one category these three bananas are there in three three apples are there so basically the distances between the objects are identified and categorized but whenever we are making the use of these type of intelligent machines like chat gpt or any other artificially intelligent uh, approach which is making the use of machine learning we are to be very careful because there can be the algorithmic bias also right and i will get you right now a number of examples where these type of programs fail miserably algorithmic bias it refers to the systematic and unfair discrimination that can occur in algorithms when they produce results that are skewed or unfair due to unintentional or inherent biases present in the data used to train them or in the design of the algorithms themselves so basically all these intelligent machines they are making the use of the concept of machine learning and they are learning just like us and how do we learn no doubt we are making the use of a number of learning techniques like induction is there abduction is there deduction is there analogy is there direct instruction is there etc etc but the most common technique which is used by us is the induction inductive learning that is known as learning from examples for example if i am asking you what is the color of a crow you will say it's black so how do you know basically you are seeing a number of crows you are seeing first crow you are seeing second crow you are seeing third crow and your parents are telling you this thing okay it's a crow it's a crow it's a crow and you are trying to find out what is common in all of them and you are seeing the color is black so you are making a rule okay the color of crow is black so basically you have been given a data set or a sample from that sample you are trying to find out what is it common in that and you are learning your learning will be depending upon this data set if this is correct learning will be fine but if there are biases in the data set then there will be the problem for example if i am telling a machine that there is a person ratan tata he is having mercedes there is a person amitabh bachchan he is having a mercedes car there is a person ambani he is having a mercedes benz he will identify this thing what is common in them so it will come to know this thing that if someone is rich he will have a mercedes car okay but suppose i am giving it this type of information that there is one 
छोटा शकील ही इज हैविंग अ मर्सिडीज बैंड देर इज दाऊद इब्राहिम ही इज हैविंग ए so if we will be giving it the uh, this type of examples so it will learn this thing that if someone is criminal then he will have a mercedes bench okay so this is an example of an algorithmic bias and there can be a number of reasons for that okay so basically there are sometimes the bias training data i am reading it here if the training data predominantly consists of successful hires who are male the algorithmic may learn to associate certain characteristics having a male name attending certain schools or having specific work experience with success in the role as a result when the algorithm is used to screen job applicants it may inadvertently favor male candidates over equally qualified female candidates due to the bias patterns learned from the training data okay reason is i am telling you there was a big failure in case of amazon case amazon was having a software to scrutinize the applications for the purpose of recruitment okay and it was favoring the male candidates it has been observed that it is biased towards male and the reason was not with the problem with the program the reason was that the data which was used to train it that was having the bias okay sometimes there can be the association bias also this bias occurs when the data for a machine learning model reinforces a cultural bias for example suppose i am providing a data set to a machine i am saying okay this person is there if this is a lady it's a nurse second nurse it's a female third nurse it's a female fourth nurse it's a female so what the system will learn it will learn this thing that for the purpose of recruitment or for this job nurse one is to be a female okay but actually this is not the essential condition only thing is when i was training that machine i will have to train it by making the use of the data so say i was having the data of my 10000 employees and all that data was about suppose all those females who were nurses so what the machine will learn it will learn this thing that for the purpose of this particular job one is to be female so when the applications are invited and if there is some application from male also for the job of nurse it will reject it so this is known as the association bias so basically uh, from this cartoon you will understand this thing how this type of inductive learning sometimes fails here it's a dog and it is saying this thing that or thinking like this that all cats have four legs i have four legs so therefore i am also a cat so these are the four important examples which i am showing here in which this machine learning programs they fail all together amazon algorithm it discriminated against women compass race bias with reoffending rates black defendants were at the risk of reoffending than their white counterparts number 3 us healthcare algorithm underestimated black patients needs did not qualify for extra care as much as white patients with the same needs number 4 chatbot they shared discriminatory tweets the chatbot was sharing tweets that were racist transphobic and antisemitic thing is uh sometimes uh, these these are the real life examples okay 
because whenever there is some intelligent program in order to learn for the purpose of learning we will have to provide it the data and there are sometimes bias in the data so if i am training the data i am training the machine by making the use of the data which is of maximum white people okay so it will be biased against the black also right so in case of these two examples number 2 and 3 compass and us healthcare they were discriminating against the black people and in one particular program uh, which was uh, which received a lot of criticism it uh, wrongly identified a black person as a gorilla so thing is if i am training it by making the use of only their data which is concerned with the white people so it will not be able to learn correctly so there are sometimes the algorithmic biases and sometimes there are the biases in the data so whenever this type of systems are to be designed the responsibility number one is there with the person who are designing the program there is to be the diversity in the team also different type of people are to be there number 2 when we are training this type of algorithms by making the use of some data there is to be a lot of diversity in that data also so thing is that whenever we are making the use of this type of programs say like chat gpt etc uh for the purpose of education etc we are to be very careful because it is not guaranteed every time that you are 100% getting the correct results its success is depending just like us for example our performance is depending upon our learning and we are learning by making the use of the examples so if we have been provided with wrong examples our learning will be wrong and our performance will not be good in the same fashion if there is a program which is making the use of the concept of machine learning it has to be provided with the data if there is a problem with the sampling of the data there can be wrong learning and in that case the results may not be correct and sometimes altogether wrong also so till date no doubt we are seeing this thing that uh, in a number of fields we are making the use of ai successfully but still in those fields where 100% accuracy is required uh, we have not reached at that particular level in case of ai because it is still depending upon the data for using which it has been trained so this is uh, about uh, my view of the artificial intelligence so i can say only one thing that thing which has changed it this artificial intelligence that is learning a lot of development is there in the field of machine learning and uh, with the advent or with the coming sort of this concept of big data because we are seeing this thing with world wide web every day millions or the billions of the pages are uploaded there is a growing trend every person is scanning the data and migrating it on the world wide web so as more and more information has been made available to the machine it is learning just like us and their performance are improving every day so in all those fields in the field of finance it is used to identify the investors or the people to whom the loan is to be given so these are used by the banks also in the field of healthcare they are used for the purpose of analysis of these mri and the x rays also in the field of education the artificial intelligence is used for the purpose of personalized training also because the main drawback of this classroom training is the teacher taught ratio because there is generally one teacher and there are approximately 30 students and teacher cannot be tailored according to the need of the student so there is the problem of personalized training with the commencement with the advent of this artificial intelligence it is possible that the system can be adapted it can be customized tailored according to the need of the students and a better education can be there so in every field we are seeing the use of artificial intelligence 
and i hope in future also there will be more development no doubt this type of anticipations are there that it will make the human being redundant there will be the problem with the jobs also but i understand that whenever a new technology is coming it's not causing unemployment rather it is causing redeployment the nature of the job will change job will remain there only thing is that this type of job in which intelligence is not involved okay uh, which one or uh, you can say more or less clerical type jobs generally no doubt i will have to say that ai will take all those type of jobs we are seeing a lot of application of this in commerce in case of letter writing or writing some text etc so thank you if any query is there uh, you can raise the question and uh, sorry there were intermittent disruption due to the internet connectivity at my end i tender my apology for that thank no, you sir, thanks perfectly fine thank you so much sir for your wonderful talk now the session is open to all the participants if someone would like to ask something from sir then you may turn on your camera and ask question okay uh, so your lecture was so interesting and it was so uh, self explanatory that i don't think there are any questions remaining thank you so much sir for your wonderful talk you started from very basic concepts of artificial intelligence illustrated the evolution in a very interesting way now i would request dr neena goel dean sciences and convener of iqac of our college to present vote of thanks over to you neena ma'am thank you so much arti a very good afternoon to all of you it's my privilege to extend my heartfelt thanks to our worthy speaker dr rakesh kumar professor and chairman department of computer science and application kurukshetra university kurukshetra for delivering his talk on the topic role of artificial intelligence in revolutionizing the society on the occasion of national technology day from siri and alexa to self driving cars artificial intelligence is progressing rapidly virtual assistants chatbots robotics are some of the common areas of artificial intelligence applications numerous other fields where there is a use of ai are cyber security healthcare space research education transportation entertainment finance and many more thank you so much sir for your insightful and engaging talk and enlightening our participants with invaluable information sir your deep knowledge and interest in your field make your topic very simple and easy to understand i would like to thank dr arti singh and the whole computer science department for their efforts to arrange this program my sincere thanks to all the participants including our students for their active participation to make this event successful i would be failing in my duty if i do not acknowledge the role of our director dr varinder gandhi and principal dr harvinder kaur who always inspire us for hosting such academic programs last but not the least i am thankful to mr govin for providing his technical support throughout this function thank you once again sir looking forward to listen to you in our future functions also thank you you thank you thank you sir thank you once again to thank all you. the participants okay thank you rakesh kumar ji and all the participants thank, thank you, you all madam thank you very much so with this we conclude our today's webinar all can leave the session now thank you once again thank you thank you thank you sir